Internal wrangling within the opposition new patriotic party appears to be deepening as plans for restructuring ahead of its delegates congress draws wrong headlines it started with the acting deputy director of communications being asked to proceed on leave followed by a series of new appointments to the party's communications directorate now first vice chairman freddie blake is questioning some of these decisions taken by the party's general secretary kwabina ejapon while the Tema East MP Daniel Titus Glover is daring Mr. Japon to take his name off the list of party communicators. It appears things are really getting head to head and nasty. The question tonight is, is the MPP ready for change within itself? Is factionalism killing the party's chances in the next elections two years away? My name is Stephen Enti and this is today's big story. Today's big story is brought to you in association with Nationwide PVC, suppliers and fabricators of high-grade UPVC windows and doors. Now, the position MPP is undergoing what many political watchers will see as normal. Change in leadership through the election of new executive, change in direction of running affairs, and soon the party will go to Congress to elect a flag bearer. These are normal sequences in the structure of any political party. But... What is raising eyebrows is the internal wrangling which seem to be tearing the party's cohesion even before the campaign starts. Is this not too familiar to a situation the party has witnessed leading to its downfall in 2008 and 2012? Well, let's hit the telephone lines now and speak to some experts. Uh, Dr. Opoku Edu is a political science lecturer. He's joining us uh, from the University of Ghana now for uh, a discussion. We, we have him built and he will be joining us soon. We'll also get onto the telephone line and speak to Ben Epson and David Agbe, who is uh, the executive director of the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. Tonight, this is what we are uh, about to discuss. My name is Stephen Enti, and if you're watching uh, today's big story, we'll be right back and we'll bring Dr. Opoku Edu online and we'll continue with our discussions. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to today's big story. So the key question tonight is that, um, is this internal wrangling within the MPP not too familiar a situation the party witnessed leading to its downfall in 2008 and 2012? And uh, Dr. Opoku Edu, a political science lecturer at the University of Ghana, is joining us on the telephone now. Good evening, sir, and thanks for your time. Yeah, good evening. Now, is it too harsh to say that the MPP is digging a trench for itself before the general elections two years that away? The MPP is doing what? I'm asking whether it is too harsh to say that the MPP is digging a trench for itself before the general elections two years away. Well, um, for now, um, I would not say that, even though... Um, some of the developments um, in the last few days uh, may give, uh, uh, you know, may point in that direction. Mm. Um, what we all know is that at this time when a party is going through um, a primary, um, there would always be a power struggle. Mm. And, and, and it all depends on how that power struggle within the MPP is managed. Right. Um, if there is um, what I'm beginning to see as a Machiavellian strategy, you know, given what Cabinet Japan did. And the result to Machiavellianism might easily lead to uh, what you are saying, that conclusion mm. that is digging its mm. own uh, 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 downfall. Right. So, I mean, I mean, you, you, you said that uh, these are, I mean, if I paraphrase you, these are, these are uh, not happenings which are unusual. I mean, in a, it's in a party of this kind, which is undergoing a lot of transformation and changes, you know, ahead of a major Congress, these are normal. But would you see it also as uh, a demonstration of healthy internal democracy? Or you would say this must change? Well, I think that um, a lot, a lot has happened, you know, to um, convince me that there has been some rather very healthy, mm. you know, development within the party, beginning from the Congress, where the new executives were chosen, and then the uh, the various elections within the mm. constituencies. But what is happening now at the party headquarters, where people, you know, are being asked, you know, to go and leave when. Some other members of the national executives are not even aware and so on. 
um, created the impression that the power struggle within the party is becoming, for want of a better term, uh, nasty. Mm. Now, one, one thing that happened today is the Tema East MP, Daniel Titus Glover, did mention that he suspects that uh, these changes, which uh, mainly led by Kwebina Ejapong, are part of a grand scheme to, to, to you know, create a favorable environment for one of the flag bearer contestants, Alan Sherman Ting. Do you see it that way? And do, do you think that this is a healthy development? Well, I think what um, Kwebina Ejapong is doing is, is open to interpretation. And anybody who interprets it that, I mean, in that way, as um, Glover has done, may not be entirely wrong. Mm. You know, um, they are now on the verge of um, having someone to lead their party in 2016. Now, all those who are going to speak for the party and, and so on would have to be put in place when the party has uh, a candidate and when they launch their campaign, which is about two years away from now, so somewhere next year. So one would have expected that um, he would have, um, 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 you know, stop all these things until after... Uh, the Congress to elect a candidate. Then when you are doing these things, um, having new people to speak for the party and so on, one we see it as part and parcel of the general preparation for, uh, I mean, towards the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. Now, as matters stand now, it's very difficult to see um, why this is being done now when we are in the process of electing our leaders and so on. Mm -hmm. um, um, under normal circumstances, there's nothing wrong in changing you know, party officials. If party officials were never changed, um, Gova and um, Okujeto wouldn't have been there. Mm. So it is a, a normal practice within party parties, but it has to be done within the confines of the rules of the party, and you should also take note of the, the, the circumstances and the times, because you are not at this stage preparing, of course, the preparations are ongoing, but you are not setting up your campaign machine now because you don't know you don't even know who is going to win and mm. uh, and so on and so one would have expected that um all these changes if they are needed will come after um october so uh, people like Grover may not be far from right mm. you know but as i said what he's doing is open to interpretation he's not telling us why he's doing so right the fact uh, that somebody to go on pension um, um on leave i mean it's not a very good reason because the man himself says that he has no appointment letter he has no conditions of service, and if he needs to rest, he will inform the party. Right. Uh, Doc, I'll, I'll have you hold briefly. I'm joined on the other telephone line by Ben Epson, who is poster and also editor of the Daily Dispatch. Good evening, Uncle Ben. All right. Good evening. Good evening to your viewers. Now, the NDC also has its issues, really. I mean, ward executives in the Cape Coast North constituency who say the NDC leadership in the Cape Coast and the region has no respect for them, have threatened to indefinitely boycott all activities. I mean, to be fair, this is not on the same scale as that of the MPP. But would you say, using that as a reference point uh, compared to what's also happening in the MPP, that the political parties are making themselves unpopular ahead of the 2016 elections, really? Um, thank you, Steve. It's not that they're mm. making themselves up. We need to bear in mind that the NDC will also be having their regional within any time soon. They'll be having their national executive elections, I think, in October. Whereas the MPPs will be, MPPs was in Tamale and their flag bearer race will be nationwide. The, MP, the NDCs will be at one spot, it will be far fewer, not 5,000 mm. uh, as the MPP did in Tamale to let the national executive to be fewer. And unlike the MPP, which has two factions, the NDC has three factions. So you, at any point in time, any regional election or constituency, you're going to have uh, two factions ganging up against one. So these are things that are that are bound to happen. But it depends on how far, how deep, how deep the knife will be stuck at the back of each other that will make the healing of wounds difficult or otherwise. Mm. So Ben, what's the situation on the ground uh, when it comes to this Nanado Alan Chermantin faction within the MPP? What are you picking on the ground about uh, what appears to be the same old factionalism which is rearing its ugly head again? If you have a favorite thing, 
if your mother is dead and you see your mom is asleep, within three days, when the body starts decomposing, you will write the body to the mortuary. Many of the MPP members are in denial that there are factions in the party. That is their beef. What is happening before us is clearly, as Doc said, a battle for control of factionalism. Mm. When Mr. Oseb Prempe, who was a uh, former Deputy Attorney General, was contesting the Ashanti Rudna chairmanship with, with to me, um, when he came on one of the radio stations and said anywhere he went to, he was asked whether he belonged to the Alan or Nana faction. Mm. So he is confessing yes, there are two factions. If you, Mr. Mr. Ayuko, too, a former Attorney General and a leading member, took it a step further to classify the two factions as Ashanti Achim. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward to the Congress in Chamali. There are perceptions that Kobne Japan and Afoko belong to the Alan faction. So you can see that the first act Afoko and Kobne did was to remove Opari Hammond, who was the finance director at the headquarters. The one who was appointed acting finance director was a campaign manager for mm. Kobne Japan. Now, Perry Okujeto is seen as a Nana uh, supporter. You need to bear in mind that in the run-up to the Tamale Congress, the allegations, certain allegations made against Mr. Foku, somebody had used Okujeto's uh, office computer to spread out those uh, allegations. Mm. So the way a manner that Perkujoto has been removed smacks of an attempt by the Alan faction to try and seize control. Mm. As Doc said, these things could have been done because October is when they are having the national election. Exactly. The problem is that most of these aspirants have their own campaign teams. This is what happens. And then you realize that when the person comes, you see those that Kobana has put in place as anti-Nana. So mm. that these candidates will often also have their own campaign team. Mm. This so, is what the MPP is doing. They are sowing the seeds of this unity which they will harvest in defeat in 2016 if it continues this way. Ben, I'll have you hold briefly. I'll go back to uh, Dr. Opokuedo, who is still on the line, really, and raise some key issues that you just raised. So, so Doc, I mean, if you look at, if you examine what Ben Epson just said, that, I mean, this uh, pro anti Nanado and uh, Alan factionalism has existed in the MPP for a while. And when political watchers raise it, a lot of MPP uh, faithfuls will tell you it's not as you see it but do you think that do you think that this is more much much of a problem than they will have us believe well um, I think um, I like I like um, um, but uh, uh, um, um, proverb that if mm. your father or mother is dead and you say he's afraid uh, <laughs> you have the problem I think that um, if the NPP continues to be in that state of denial, then over time, you know, the problem would grow and mutate, you know, mm. and, and it would be mm. a problem for them. But let me say that um, these factions, you know, they will always be there somehow. Uh, one needs to find out what its dimensions are, what, how do we define it, what shapes it. These are, in my opinion, mm. um, extremely um, important. Right. Um, the point is that, first and foremost, there is something within the MPP which attracted both Nana and um, Alan, Alan to be part of the party in the first place. Mm. The question is, what is it? What is it that attracts these two people? Why didn't they go in different directions? Why did Nana join, for example, the PPP or the CPP? But, so there is something which often, most often than not, we tend to ignore which attract these two people to the same political party. And that thing is what is uniting them. It may be an ideology, it may be a historical tradition, whatever it is. So the, the forces that appear to be dividing them are counterbalanced, as um, I'm sure you are aware, mm -hmm. by equally, you know, forces that unite them. You know, because it seems to me that both are, um, both people, you know, um, believe in, 
liberal democracy and the rule of law, separation of powers, right. you know, um, the so-called uh, uh, um, property-owning democracy. So mm. the, the, the fascists, what is shifting it, what is driving it? Is it the so-called uh, Ashante attempting, or is this simply because people in the party think that this or that person will be a better leader? And these are normal things to happen in a political party. Right. I agree with Ben. I agree with Ben that they don't have to be in a state of denial. And I think that the, what is keeping, what is emerging now, which is of concern to me in particular, is uh, the, the, the creeping Machiavellian tactics mm -hmm. that is being resorted to by Kamel Japon in particular. And I think that he has to um, understand that whatever they do now, if they don't do it well and according to the rules of the party, it is going to seriously affect them in 2015, as Ben said. Right. Uh, Dr. Pokwedu, we are grateful for your time. Dr. Pokwedu yes, is a sir. senior political science lecturer at the University of uh, Ghana, Lagos. Now, Ben Epson, you're still on the line. Now, I, I, I quickly want to begin to wrap with you. Tell me, I mean, looking at the circumstances on the ground, the issues facing the MPP against their denial, which you put it, the way you put it, denial of factionalism within the party, and also against the fact that they're coming from an opposition background trying to win power in 2016. What should they be looking at doing to make their party appealing to the general masses, especially the floating voters who may have the power to determine whether MPP wins or not? Is it Steven? Uh, I think that as they stand now, we haven't done any opinion polls, mm. but I think that Nanado is in a good position to be among the five to be elected and to win rather handsomely if four people contest against him in October to be the MPP's flag bearer for the third time in 2016. Mm. What has been going on is that those who think that Nana has gone on two occasions and should not be given another chance are just not being realistic. These backstabbings will continue. And I think that if you notice from 2004 how Nana's votes has been dropping, especially in Ashanti region, mm. that you can have an idea whether it is apathy which has been killing Nana's attempt to be the president of Ghana, because figures don't lie. Mm. Uh, Nana Kufuado in 2008, for example, needed 80,000 votes to win first round with four regions. He didn't get it. There was clearly a huge level of apathy in Ashanti. And when after the first round, they went round to appeal and apologize in the run of over 220,000 people turned out to vote by trust too late. Mm. One way the MPP can do, one thing they can do is to bear in mind that if you, are, when you want to be an alternative to the ruling government, election one is two years away. So if you're in opposition and you are divided, the floating voters will think that if they give you power, you could be divided into mm. three or uh, four or five factions. The earlier the Council of State puts its foot, the Council of Elders in the party mm. put their foot down now, the better, the for better the party it will be, be for the for party. 2016. Because when Sun mm. Miss Gary, mm. it's very difficult to separate the two. Right. Uh, ben, I'll have you hold again. I'll keep you till we finish. But I'll get on to the other telephone and speak to David Agbe, who is the executive director of the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. David, you see this whole ripple as something which is deeper than what it looks like on the surface. Why do you think so? Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. Um, you know, inner party conflicts are very, you know, terrible in things, although it can happen as an inevitable situation mm. which is quite legitimate but the way it is you know showing and demonstrating within mpp um you know internal wrangling it is it, not a good situation mm. and so we will try to appeal to the leadership of the party that they need to find a way of resolving these inner party conflicts mm. so that they will become more resolute to face, you know, uh, election 2016. Looking at what is happening now, it's purely of position and influence and, and personal rivalry, which is 
you know, uh, showing and demonstrating within MPP now. So that personal rivalry and position and uh, influence, they can be able to, you know, manage it in such a way that all of them will respect transparency and democratic rules as far as their party is concerned. So, David, so, what it, so, so David, David, we don't have a lot of time, but I need to ask you a quick follow-up question. When it comes to governance, do you think this is going to be a weakness for a party which is seeking to form the next government, all of what is happening? Do you think it's bad, really? It, it is a weakness, as was mentioned by Mr. Ben Epson. Mm. It is a weakness. If internally you cannot handle such, in certain situations, basic appointment, party structures are not respected, you, I mean, you are not seeing that democratic rules and practices within the context of, uh, I mean, inner party. And it is, it is quite worrying. And so they need to actually find an antidote to it. They need to have that political medicine of, mm. you know, sharing a descending view among them. And so if those things are lacking, then it, 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 it's not the best for the party. Mm. And Intra-party democracy is necessary, you know, in order to increase influence and contribution among the party. And so Nanado 2012 looked at the election as Mr. Ben Epstein was giving a scenario. Somebody who was able to garner 5 million votes, but still he wasn't able to win, I mean, with a slight margin, less than, you know, 300,000 votes. It, it tells you clearly that there were certain things which were not handled properly. It, it, it tells you clearly that undemocratic structures were there. And so legal you know, guidelines need to exist among them so that they will know that they are following a certain method and a certain procedure so that the party will have that robust cohesion to be able to fight and fight well for their, uh, for their voters. Because as we speak now, Five million people within MPP, they are all shaking now. What is happening to our party? They, by now, they could have gathered more energy to actually confront N NDC and challenge NDC that NDC people... This but, is what but, David, to Ghanaian, but David, but David... But are not doing exactly so. David, talking about the NDC, I mean, the NDC has its own internal issues as well. I mean, the, the, there is an issue reported in the media today about... Uh, executives in the Cape Coast North constituency who are unhappy with the regional executives and are, are threatening to go on an indefinite boycott of all activities in the region. That is a key issue in the, in, within the NDC as well. So what about them? I mean, they also have issues. So <laughs> moving on. Mm. So, uh, Steve, two things which are going to happen to these two big political parties, NDC, MPP. MPP, this internal fighting or inner fighting is going to harm them, is going to affect them 2016. And NDC, voter apathy, is also going to affect them. Mm. So those, those are the, the disease which we are seeing clearly showing that if it is not resolved, these parties are going to suffer you know, a certain wrath of, right. the, of, of their voters. And right. so they need to find a way of resolving this matter amicably. And so whoever is involved, need to have that mindset of very discipline coming onto the, the table of negotiation where each and every one will be able to share a descending view that will be able to prepare the party to challenge the NDC come 2016. Right. David, quickly, uh, um, Ben Epson has given us some recommendations. What, Apart from what you just mentioned, what are some other recommendations that you can put out for the MPP to make itself appealing going forward to the 2016 elections? I think that it is very much important that everybody involved in such conflict, you know, respect democratic decisions of the party. So they need to respect the, the, the party hierarchy. They need to respect the party, you know, uh, functions. And they need to have that common respect for everybody. Promotion of intra-party way of resolving issues, trying to involve people who have that descending mm. view will be able to help them. And they need to have that energy of trying to uh, tell people, trying to convince other people that this is the way we need to manage this crisis. And the crisis is between Nana Dodanko Akufuado and Alain Tremantin. So who, I mean, they need to be able to iron some of these things. I would have expected that by now, those seven candidates going to contest 
They need to have a round table to be able to discuss issue, trying to demonstrate to Ghanaians that we, 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 we are co-equal or we are in right. to be able to prepare uh, I mean, our party very well to face NDC. But you are not seeing that demonstration. You are not seeing that possibility of discussion certain things that will be able right. to prepare the party very well. And so each and everyone needs to share their opinion that must be more calculated by making sure that their views are not distorted, which will be able to bring the party down. So they have a lot of things that they, they need to actually uh, uh, put in place to be able right. to resolve this matter. Right, if you David. look at the context mm. very well, you look as if Alan Shamanti has its own people, and Nana Dodankwa also has its own people, and they are not trying to click together. Mm. And if they are not clicking, it's going to deepen that infighting, and that will be able to affect them come 2016. So the better they find a way of resolving the matter, uh, will be able to help them uh, the better. Right, David, we're grateful for your time. David is the Executive Director of the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. Ben Epson, you're still on the line. Ben, quickly, uh, I'll give you a final word to wrap uh, one minute. Looking at how things are going, does the MPP look appealing? Who is a long time in politics? Whether they look appealing, I think a year from now, uh, people will take a decision, especially the voting voters. But what we all need to bear in mind that at this time of disagreement, when supporters of the factions curse each other, insult each other, when one of them wins, you can bet that upper to be at its highest mm. peak, that they will not get up at 4 a.m. and go and queue and vote. And when that happens, it's going to be bad for the party. Election defeat stares you in the face. Right, Ben, I'm grateful for your time. We don't have a lot of time. We, our time is up. My name is Stephen Antti. Thank Thanks, you very much. gentlemen, for joining us on today's Big Story. We'll take a break and we'll be right back with an interactive segment. Stay with us.